Hey guys, so the other day I'm rummaging through some old catalogs I have. I have two copies of Sony Style Magazine, which is basically a catalog for Sony products. This one came out in the fall and winter of 1994. And as I'm browsing through the magazine, I run across this ad, which catches my eye. It's like, okay, this looks like an interesting piece of electronics. It almost looks like a laptop laying down on its screen. And then I turn the page and I see this. And this spread here is talking about books on electronic devices. So a, a, an electronic book. But look at how happy these young people are to, to read a book on this device that he's holding here in his hand. Well, you go one page further and look, there's that same device we saw two pages ago. So this is the MMCD player from Sony. It's a PIX100. It had a retail price of $1,000. Again, this is like in the early to mid 90s. So I thought, well, I'd love to show off one of these. I'd like to have one in my hands and then I'd love to be able to show it on my YouTube channel. And so I managed to get one and I've got this thing to show you today. And then I've got this guy here to show you today. And then we're gonna look at another format and that is the Kodak Photo CD player. So let's take a look at the media and take a look at the electronics devices themselves. Here's the media for the electronic book reader from Sony. You can see it's just a three inch CD inside of a caddy, just a data disc inside of a caddy. Now what's interesting is, and you'll see in a minute, this machine will not only read books, but it'll also play CDs. You can play three inch CD singles or burn your own CDs on a three inch disc and play them in the player. Here is the only media I could find online for the MMCD player. So this is uh, an IBM made disc. Strangely enough, what does IBM and Sony have in common? Well, apparently IBM was making software and they made software for the MMCD player. So this one's called a corporate guide to national parks way, way back in the dark ages, before we had personal computers in our pockets with cameras on them, Kodak was making photographic film and 35 millimeter cameras. You would take your camera on vacation and take pictures. Then you would take that film out of the camera, take it to your local drugstore or Walmart, have the film developed into prints and then bring them home and enjoy them. Well, Kodak said, what about being able to watch those particular photos you took on a television screen. So they decided to introduce the Kodak photo CD format. So in the same way, you could take your film to be processed and they would copy in high resolution, very high resolution, to CDs, which you could take home and play on a player. And now here is the media pictured with its associated player. Here are my three models of the Sony Data Discman multimedia players Although not called MMCD, these are called Data Disk Man. Strangely enough. All right, so this one is the Genius DD150. This is the Non Genius DD8. And this one is a Non Genius DD350. I don't know why some of them were called Genius, but uh, okay, so this media came with this one, and this media here arrived with that model right there. So let's first put some batteries in this guy. I'm gonna operate on two double A's. Strange how some of these Sony's have rechargeable batteries or they have proprietary batteries. It's kind of strange how that works. So we turn that on. It says, please insert the disc. So this one, you put the disc in in the front right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and put in our murder mystery disc. So it goes in like that. Oh, now it says it cannot read the disc. Okay, that's not cool. How about we play the music CD? See if it'll read that. I can show you how this works. These are easily accessible via a little clip here down at the bottom right. So push that in with your pinky. And this comes off and this disc is actually one I burned myself. So I'm going to put it in there correctly. 
It's probably not the problem on the other one though. I just did that for for looks there as we got started. So let's see if we can play a music disc here. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. It's cool that uh, it has a speaker down here on the side. We've got volume and contrast controls here on the right side. Flip it around here. There's a place for a DC power supply. And our headphone jack is over here. So you can take it with you. It's portable, fits in the palm of your hand. Take that with you on trips read your favorite books, if the player actually works. Now let's take a look at this one. This is the DD350. Same contrast volume controls here. We've actually got a video out and a headphone jack, and then you can switch a light on or off, so that's your backlight for the screen. A little bit more deluxe model. Put your disc in here, power supply there, batteries go in here. Good old standard double A's. There's the bottom of the unit there. Now the reason I was interested in this one is it's a widescreen format. I thought that was pretty cool. And the bottom of the unit does not open. Now sometimes this one does have trouble reading the disc and I have to fiddle with it to get it to read it. And of course it works perfectly the first time. So there we go. This electronic book contains great mystery classics about this disc getting started. So if I go into my great movie classics here, great mystery classics, I should say, I'm going to hit the yes button. Let's see. Let's do a menu search and we'll do authors. And then let's do uh, Joseph Conrad. Okay, there's the books that are on there. So I'll just select the first one. So there you go. Electronically enhanced text, copyright 1993 by World Library. And at that point, you just use your arrow keys, arrow down, and we are reading a book on the Sony Multimedia Player. This guy here, I did, I worked very hard to try and restore it for you guys to show it working and it needed new capacitors. When I turned on the screen, it was just a bunch of lines that appeared on the screen and I took it apart, which is very simple. There's just screws going around the outside of it here. You take those little screws off, open it up. Uh, this one here actually uses four AA batteries, headphone jack, volume control, DC in. This one does NTSC and PAL video out, which is right there. Contrast control, power on and off, and then an eject button for once you put your disc in to the side of the player. So again, that is the electronic book player system, also known as Data Disc Man for your viewing pleasure. And here it is, the Sony MMCD player, multimedia CD-ROM player, PIX100. Now, as far as I know, this is the only one that was ever produced, the only model. So again, after this one, there was nothing. Now here's what it looks like on the inside. Very similar to our little genius guy over here, except on a different scale, as you can see. This, this little guy fits right inside that one. So that gives you an idea of the scale of this particular model. It has a contrast control, a backlit display right here, QWERTY keyboard. It's got a power and charge light on it. Now the reason it has a charge light is because it has a rechargeable camcorder battery in it. Yes, a camcorder battery. We have a nice big, for its size, speaker right here, aimed right at you. We got our yes, no buttons and our up, down, left, right. 
and the special button, which I don't know what that does. It does something special though, I'll tell you that. And then we've even got function keys going across the top, like on a computer, F1 through F5. We close the lid, look at it from the side. Right here, we've got a serial port. It's even labeled serial port. We have a headphone jack and a volume control. Once again, this one has a video output, so you can connect it to your NTSC television. DCN of 10 volts. The side has nothing and the front has nothing. And on the bottom, there's that camcorder battery. It is an NP55H. Pretty crazy, huh? It's got some weight to it. It's heavy. And this is a little rubber door that like doesn't go back on very easily. There we go. Now, unfortunately, I have bad news. Although I attempted to replace all of the capacitors on this little unit for you, in the process of doing so, I ran into all kinds of issues with pads coming off where the surface mount capacitors would go and connectors between two circuit boards that kind of sandwiched together and those little parts came apart and fell off. So I was not able to restore this to its beauty of working once again. In fact, the only thing I got out of this player was this. Now the MMCD disc doesn't appear to have any difference to it. In other words, it was supposed to be a high capacity CD but to me, the disc itself doesn't look any different. And why does it say compact disc digital audio on there? I guess there is digital audio on it, but it's not like a regular CD that you can play in your CD player. And there's what the disc looks like. It just looks like a regular CD. Apparently this machine runs on some sort of variant of DOS, disc operating system. But I put this disc in my computer, my old Windows 98 computer, and double clicked on some of the DOS programs on there. There were in fact EXEs and they did not run. So there you go. And here we have my two recently acquired Kodak Photo CD players. These are portable as opposed to one that I reviewed way back in the day, which was a component system. It was like a component CD player that happened to be a photo CD player. The N2000 was intended to be used by businesses. Now remember, this was back in the early 90s when we did not have CD burners. So you had to put together a presentation and then take it to a professional company that had a photo CD burner that could make the CD for you. Here is the remote for the unit here, the professional remote. Controls underneath this little lid here. There's a connector here just in case you were too far from the player to do your changing of your slides, you could plug a wire in, a three and a half millimeter cable, and plug it in here. The other end of that three and a half millimeter cable would go right here where it says remote. This has S video output, regular composite video output, audio left and right. You can connect a pair of headphones here with your volume control. You have an infrared sensor here, and you have a little feedback light here that tells you if the machine is doing what it's supposed to do. We have an open button here, power, mode, program, stop, previous track, next track, and of course, your CD goes in here. On the back, we have a connector for a seven volt power cord, AC to DC. And that about rounds it up as far as that one goes. This model here, the 970, again, was designated for home use. Instead of having a remote connector, it's got an RF modulation connector here, which I don't have the RF modulator, an S-video output, and the same other three RCA jacks. Same 7-volt input on the back. We have an infrared port here on the front, but there is no LED to indicate what it's doing. It just says two times telephoto, 8x oversampling, and ADPCM sound. The discs themselves were made with cooperation from Philips Corporation, and 
They could be played on CDI players as well. You could also play them on a Panasonic 3DO player, I believe. Here's the remote up close for the home use one. And you could press a button on here and zoom into your photos and just, you know, like in the movies, just take a particular section and zoom in on it. As far as the software goes, you would get a disc similar to this one with a calendar of all your photos on the front. It wouldn't have this part on it. And you would have this photo CD that was ready to be put into the player. There were two types of, of discs for these as well. For corporate use, you could get just your presentation put on one of these discs, take your slides in and have them put onto a photo CD. Or you could get a hold of some software and build yourself a portfolio disc. Now, a portfolio disc has both words, uh, well, it has narration as well as pictures on it, which is really cool. If you guys want to see what it looks like to play a portfolio disc, you can go to the link in the description of this video. Here is what my Kodak Photo CD Portable Player 2000 demo disc is like. In the process of trying to get these players to work, I found that when you first receive them, let's say you go on eBay and find you one, it's probably going to just give you an error on the screen down here. What you're gonna to need to do is open up the player and make some adjustments to some tiny little potentiometers on the inside. I'll show you how it works. All right, I now have the unit open and let's take a look down in here because this is where all the action is going to be. So we're looking at the bottom side of the CD-ROM drive currently and we're gonna go ahead and hit the power button and watch what it doesn't do or does do. So I'm gonna cycle the power here. Now what it should do is quickly read the table of contents and then stop. And that is not what is happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the control, the potentiometer that you see right there. Let's see if it'll focus on it here with my new super cool camera. There it is. Okay, so we need to adjust that potentiometer. And then after we do, we're gonna go over here to this board here next to it. This is all just the control board for the CD-ROM drive, believe it or not. Over here is your main board for everything else. Check out this, uh, this cool thing here, Kodak Philips. So Kodak actually partnered with Philips to create these wonderful little instruments. So there's three other potentiometers we're going to adjust. It's that one, and then the two you see in the middle of your screen. Those are all to adjust this particular laser's ability to read discs. And guys, this will pretty well wrap up this short video on these three amazing multimedia disc players from the early 90s. If you'd like to see any more in detail on any of this stuff, leave me a comment below and we may make another video kind of doing a deeper dive into one of these particular products. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can also leave a comment below and I'll be reading those as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.